Let's go ahead and work on another common website layout that we see on the web, and that's the textured background. I'm going to go and click on File and click New. From there, I'll select the preset that I've been using of 955, 600, and I'll click OK. I want to add a couple of things to this. So on the Layers panel, I'll go ahead and click on the Solid Color Fill layer, and I'm going to select Black. You can choose whatever you color you want. For the purposes of this exercise, I'm just keeping it simple and using a black color. I'm going to double click on this and call this Web Background. I want to import a couple of other assets in here for us to start playing with. So go into your Course Downloads folder and select Background, select your Shield, and select your Ribbon, and drag those into Photoshop to open. These are the three things that I'm going to include in this project. Now, the background is the first one that I want to work with. So using your Move tool, go ahead and click and move it over to the Untitled one and let it go. It's a little big, so I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to do a Command T or Control T to be able to transform this down a little bit. I like that right about there. I'm just going to kind of bring it to the very, very edge. Maybe I'll use the arrow keys to kind of nudge it in place. This is the background that you're going to see on the original site, but I want this to kind of fade out, and I want it to fade into the background color, which in this case is black. That way, when you scroll, you don't necessarily have this chunk repeating over and over and over again. To do that, I'll do a mask. Select Mask, and now I'll apply a gradient with black to white. So I want this to be hidden. I'm going to go ahead and shift click and drag. Maybe a little bit too much. I'm going to do it right about there. This takes care of any repeating. So it starts off with this textured background and then kind of goes down to nothing. But I do want to make sure that these edges are black just in case I want to center this layout. So I'm going to use a brush with the black color and I'm going to click on this very edge here. I have the center of the brush off the canvas because I want to use the feather on the edge. So I'm going to click here and release. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to click. And that'll make sure that I paint with that feather edge. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down the shift key, and click. Now these edges seem to be okay. Let's go ahead and grab a couple more assets in here. I'm going to go and select the shield. Using my move tool, I'll drag it into the untitled and drop it in there. It's a little big, it's fine. I'm just going to use my wand to select this white area and then inverse by going select inverse. Once I have the inverse selected, I'll go ahead and click on a mask. That'll give me just the shield by itself, which I can then do a Command T to transform and bring down a little smaller and bring it up here. If you're concerned about the size, you can also just convert this into a smart object. Notice that the edge of the shield has that white background for a halo. So I'm just going to use my brush and right on that mask, I'll paint with black to eliminate that halo. I mean, we're talking comp here, so all of this stuff will get replaced at one point. Now that I have it set, I'll zoom out. It looks pretty good. I'm going to grab that ribbon. That ribbon is a gold ribbon, and you'll notice that it's a smart object. So this is actually an Illustrator file that's placed in here. Illustrator files are fine to work with. Photoshop files are fine to work with. So find the one that you want to use. I kind of like this from an Illustrator standpoint. And I wanted to be able to use a smart object. So to that, I'm going to single click on this and I'm going to drag it on top of my untitled layout. I'm going to let it go there in a second and plop it right to the center. I want to use this at the same time it's yellow. And I kind of want to match this red that's here. The easiest way for me to do this is just going to be to double click on this and select layer style for it. I know that I can do a color overlay, but if I do color overlay, I'm going to lose a lot of the detail of ribbon. So a blend mode would help me here. This one's going to be kind of you play around and find something that works. I select color and notice it didn't work very, very well for me. I kind of wanted something that kind of darkened out a little bit. So I played around and one of the things that I thought worked well for me here was linear light. Once I have that set, I can go ahead and click on a darker color and you'll notice that the nuances appear the folds that I was really, really looking for. So that works for me. It might work different for you. You might find something else that's going to be better for you. Play around with that. That's what I would encourage. I'm going to go ahead and transform and shrink this down just a tad. 
I'm going to put that right there, and then I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. That's going to be the banner for the site. I could just grab this, transform it, and kind of scale it out a little bit so that I have a much wider background. And I want to make sure that I stay under that around 150. This is where the navigation should technically end for me. I don't want to go too far down. So drag that back up. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll grab that shield and I'll bring it up a little bit so that it kind of gives it a little bit of a textured look. This is on top of this. It'll look nicer. Now, I'm just going to go and select the type layer and I'm going to type in my name. Command enter. And notice that don't, you can't really see it. So once I do a command enter, a lot of the times I don't like having everything selected when I want to browse for type. So I'll do a command enter for committing. Make sure that I stay on the layer that I want to use and then select the type tool again. This lets me kind of scrub up and see what kind of type I want to be able to use. I can also select on the type there and then just kind of go up and down until I find what I want. This is feeling a little antique -y, so I'm just going to go back and use my standard Trajan. I'll grab that layer now and I'll put it over here and maybe just using select tool I'll drag this down just a little bit because it's a little Big. Switch back to move, bring this back up here. Once I have that set, I'll do an alt drag and I'll move to this side. And then from there, replace. I can go ahead and grab my arrow tool and kind of nudge back and get exactly where I want it. Once I've done that, what I want to do is I want to be able to make a box that's going to kind of scroll down here and it's going to hold all of the content. So I'm going to select U and switch back to that rectangle box and draw out a box. That's the box that I want to use, but I don't want it over that ribbon. So I'll drag it under the cool banner, but just over this background. These two elements are going to be background elements. So I'm just going to shift click both of them, hold down the shift key and select my layer group. And I'll call that background elements. Matter of fact, I probably should just throw my web background in there as well and make sure that it's all the way at the bottom. Take a look. If I double click this, the edges are masked out, so it does come through. I'm going to select my black, click OK. We're all set there. I want to add a stroke to this, so I'm just going to go ahead and select a stroke. I'll put in a color. I'm going to be a dark color for now, but I want to make sure that I keep that color handy because that color is going to be the color that I'm going to use when I start doing stuff inside of CSS. I'll use a web safe color of 333333 and click OK. Once I have that set, I'm going to do that and click OK, and then I'm going to transform this box so that I could see the very bottom edge of it, just in case I need to be able to use that as a graphic. Why not? The last thing that I want to be able to put here is I want to put my navigation that's going to go across the top here. So just click with your text tool and I'm going to type in about. I'll hit a couple spaces, maybe about four spaces. And let's just do all caps, biography, four spaces, galleries, four spaces, contact. Do a command enter. And then from here, I can shrink this down a little bit and try to see if I can move it into the position that I want it. I'm going to move that up to the top so that I can kind of go over these guys here. That's looking a little bit better, but I'm going to try to play with this a little bit more. Maybe what I'll do is I'll make it a little smaller and move it into this place. And it'd be really cool if I can get to bend. So using my text tool, I'm going to go ahead and click on the board on the warp and I'll use an arc. I can decrease the amount of bend that I have there to kind of get it to conform right to where I need it. I could always just move this around and put it exactly where I need it there. Once I have it all set, I'll click OK. Now, let me just zoom in here real quick to show you something. When you use thin text on web design, sometimes because of the anti-aliasing, the text won't appear very, very sharp. So a cool trick to be able to kind of get it exactly the way you would want it is to just duplicate this. Watch what happens when I duplicate this layer. It really does round it out by having a second copy there. 
From there, you can just grab these two and just convert them to a smart object. And now you can move them around. Now, the downside to this is that if you needed to be able to change that text, you'd have to go into the smart object and then change on both layers. But this is going to work for me now. Maybe for a little bit of depth, I'll go ahead and select this and I'll add a little bit of a drop shadow. Maybe just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and work on the spread here. It kind of melds right in there. And maybe one of the last elements that I can include here is probably some lines to separate all of this. So I have a black line here. It's about one pixel. So I'll just click and drag here and then just make another line here. Make another line here. And deselect that and see what that looks like. Not very good. I'm just going to go ahead and select one of these reds and then just go a little darker than that red. I like that. I'm going to copy this hex value and I'm just going to paste it to all of these guys. Grab the last one. Come over here. Paste. Looks good. I'm going to zoom out. Now that I have that, well, you know what? Let's go back in here and let's go add some Lipsum. So, Lipsum.org. We'll grab some five paragraphs of that. We'll drag this in. And clicking over here, I'm just going to drag out a text box. And I'll just paste that. Again, it's going to use the Trajan file because that's what we were using before. I'm just going to highlight all of this, go to my character, and easiest way for me would be to reset the character, and then just set it back to white, set it back to Arial. Notice I can just type right in there, and I'm good to go. Now I know kind of what this is going to look like. I want to put a graphic maybe at the top or maybe a graphic on the side, but I can start making better choices here because I can say, all right, well, maybe I do want this to be just one giant column. If I do, maybe that's what it's going to look like. So I can position it exactly the way I want it and be good. So this is a layout that you have now with a textured background going into a dark color. We've incorporated some smart objects coming out of Illustrator, and we still have some comp graphics we're using here. If the client likes it, we can always just tell them, all right, well, this is good. Let me go get real graphics, and then we can drop all the real graphics in here. But we haven't taken a lot of time to work on anything else here. This is going to be a good place for us to be able to work with cutting the graphics and assembling everything inside of Dreamweaver. And we'll talk about it in the next video.